In this lesson, we're going to talk about naming and locating SAS datasets. The goals here are to understand the libname statement and what a libref is, uh, short for library reference. We'll talk about SAS data libraries and the difference between a temporary and a permanent data library. And we'll talk about SAS uh, dataset naming conventions. As we've seen so far, in SAS, whenever you're working with a data set, and so far we've only been talking about uh, uh, using data sets in the context of running a SAS procedure, whenever we do that, you need to tell SAS where the data set is located and the name of the actual data set. And uh, that previous method that we've used is referred to as direct referencing. So this is simply to say that if you run a proc contents, the contents procedure, for example, obviously uh, SAS needs to know what data set you want to run that procedure on. And what we've done so far is to explicitly reference the file path and the actual SAS data set name. So the actual SAS data set name is demo, and everything coming before demo is just the file path uh, leading to the folder on my computer where this SAS data set is located. So it should be fairly intuitive so far, um, uh, at least I imagine it might be that when you're working with procedures, SAS needs two critical pieces of information. First, you need to specify the data location as we just talked about. And this is simply the uh, file path to the folder on your computer or your flash drive or your network drive where the data set is located. And then in addition to that, SAS also needs to know the name of the actual data set. In our example so far, we've been using the SAS data set named demo. And we've also seen that when we're referencing the data set of interest, you don't need to include the file extension .sas 7 bdat You can just use the actual name of the SAS data set. And then you would have your semicolon to end that statement and, and a run statement, of course. The problem is that typing out those file paths can be very cumbersome, uh, and it's all also very error prone. Uh, it's a common source of errors if you're trying to type out the full file paths and the data set names. And then if you were to get a new computer where maybe the, uh, the original file directories, uh, the names and, and folder names of, of those directories changed, you'd have to go through all of your code and update the file paths over and over and over again for every procedure you run, etc. Or for example, if you uh, switch computers and you have data on a flash drive, oftentimes there's a small change uh, to the root folder, it may change from a Y or, a, or an X to a Z or a V, for example. And you would need to go through and change all those, and that's time consuming. So we're going to talk about an alternative approach that uh, has many advantages, and it's the approach that we'll use consistently uh, throughout the remaining lessons in this, cor in this course. I'll talk through uh, the basic uh, syntax of the example here and then show you an example and then uh, you can go ahead and try it. So the, the approach here is to first use what's called a libname statement, which is located at the top of the slide, your libname statement here, followed by what's called a libref. The word epic is the libref that I have assigned right now. You could name your libref anything you like. It doesn't have to be epic. It could be uh, football or cupcakes or whatever you prefer uh, within a few constraints. There are a few naming rules that we'll talk about shortly. But the point is that this libref, or in other words, the word that comes immediately after the libname statement, is user-defined. And then in quotation marks after the libref, you'll simply insert your file path. And we talked about how to find file paths on your computer in a previous lesson. Uh, it was lesson two, I believe, where we talked about introduction to SAS procedures. And finally, you would end the libname statement with a semicolon. 
So a couple of key things uh, to, to point out and make sure that you're aware of. First, the file path should be included in quotation marks. That's very important. And it should be specific to the location of your SAS dataset on your computer. Now in this class, I will show a lot of examples. And of course, the examples I show use file paths that will be relative to the location of the SAS datasets on my computer. And those will never be the same file paths that you need to use. Um, so it's one piece of the SAS code that you'll frequently need to update uh, when you download the, the uh, editor files that I provide to you. And then finally, another very important point is that when you specify the file path, you should not include the actual dataset name. The goal of the libname statement is simply to uh, tie some keyword, your libref or library reference, to a location on your computer, not to a specific SAS dataset. Okay. So everything we've talked about so far is in regard to the libname statement. And again, the goal of the libname statement is simply to collect, connect this libref, user-defined library reference here, which I've named EPIC, to a particular file path. Now, after that's done, then you could try and run a procedure, as I've done on the bottom of the, the slide here. This is a proc contents. We've seen proc contents in prior lessons. And I want to run a proc contents on the data set named demo. This is the data set we've been using so far. Now, how does SAS know where the data set demo is or how to get to it? It knows because I've specified the epic libref right here. So the next question is, how does SAS know where the epic libref is located? It's because we define that in a libname statement prior to running this procedure. Now let's jump into SAS and just give it a try. I'm going to be starting uh, from scratch here, just opening SAS, uh, so you see a reminder of how to open up the, the program. Uh, generally, you'd go to your Start menu, to All Programs, to SAS, SAS 9.3 or 9.2, whatever version you're using. So I want to make sure my editor window is activated. I'm actually going to expand the editor window. It's a little bigger. And then I need to open an existing editor file because I've created an edit editor file in advance for this particular lesson. So I go up to File, Open Program. And now it's simply a matter of navigating to the location on your computer where you've saved this particular file. So this would be epic 2013 underscore lesson 3. And there's the editor file. Now first, let's just run a proc contents using the direct referencing method, the same method that we've been using uh, up until now. So again, you just highlight the code that you want to submit, and then click on the running person, and click Submit. That brings you to the output window where the proc contents uh, default information has been output. And now you can see a, a number of different pieces of information as we previously discussed about the data set. One thing I want to point out again here, we've already talked about proc contents, so I won't go over it in great detail, but note that the file path uh, for your data set is listed here. So if you're ever need to go back and figure out what the where the file path for your data library is, you could always get that in a in a prop contents. I'll clear that. So this was using the direct referencing method and now I'm going to jump down and use the approach where we uh, assign uh, location to a library reference or a libref using a libname statement. So I'll highlight the libname statement and click Submit. And note that this does not produce any output. We're not asking SAS to create output or run any particular procedure. All we're doing here is providing essentially a set of rules for this particular operating or working session in, in SAS. 
And those rules are to tell SAS in the appropriate places when I specify the word EPIC, you should go to this folder on this computer uh, to find the data set that I will ask you to run a procedure on or a data step, etc. And after you uh, highlight and submit that code, you could look in the log file and what you should see is uh, a note that simply says libref epic was successfully assigned as follows uh, and it will, the most important piece of information is that it will give you the physical file location. So you can make sure that you actually pointed it to the correct file or to the, to the correct uh, directory on your computer. After you run that libname statement, uh, it's only required to, to be run one time per working session. Then you can move forward and actually run some procedures. So again, I can run a proc contents just as I did above. The key difference here is that instead of having a full file path here uh, after the data equals option, I simply have the word epic. When SAS sees that, it knows that uh, phrases in this particular position of the code are librefs, and it's going to look into its internal memory and say, has the data library uh, epic been defined previously? And it has been because we ran this libname statement, which told SAS, when you see epic, go here. Now that means SAS is going to go to that folder location, find the data set, the SAS data set called demo, and it will run the contents procedure. Let's submit that code. And again, you see the proc contents works and we get the output in the output window. Clear that. And you can double check that it worked in the log file as well. You just get a note saying the procedure uh, contents was used and a little information about processing time. Now after that's done, throughout the remaining time in your SAS working session, anytime you want to run a procedure or, or point SAS for any purpose to a data set, you can now use the libref instead of the full file path. In this block of code, I'm running a proc print uh, to look at the demographic data set. Again, I'm telling SAS where the data set is located by using this symbolic reference or this keyword or what's called a libref, a library reference that I have named epic up above in the libname statement. So this will run a print procedure on the data set demo located in this location. And this is no different than what we've seen previously when we printed out the demo data set in previous lessons and you can scroll through and actually look at the variables and the values for those variables for different observations in the data set. So at this point, I would recommend that you stop the, the lesson or pause the lesson and just go into the editor file and update your file path appropriately and try this with a couple of different procedures.